This is the lovely thing about being out here, is that pretty much everywhere I go, I see elephants. And I'm really enjoying that. I've enjoyed spending as much time as possible with them. They seem to love the swampy area. So do the lions. This is not far from where the lions were earlier. And they're gathered together around the spot because this is where lots and lots of water flows down from the mountains and saturates the soil. So the food here, I think, for the elephants is quite scrumptious. We've just been talking about tusks and the size of elephant tusks. Have a look at this one over here on the left-hand side of the road. Look at that. Really, really very long tusks, almost to the end of his trunk. Oh, we've seen lots of these elephants recently. It really is quite special. There you, can, you can actually see beautifully on this elephant which tusk is the dominant one and which is the slightly less used tusk. So much like human beings, elephants are at least partially left and right or right tusked in that they pref often prefer to use one over the other. Now, it might even be a factor of the way that these tusks have grown because the one on the right would, I imagine, be just that much easier to use. It hangs slightly lower than the tusk on the left, and you can see how the point on the right is worn away from where it has been digging underneath bushes and moving up grass and so on. Hi, buddy. Uh, this side of the lugger, but they disappeared. They went flat in the bush there. Yeah, Not down, but just on this side. Maybe if you check along, maybe you get lucky they popped out. Cheers, guys. Sorry, just telling one of the other guides of where the lions were. So yes, left and right tusks are sometimes very clear, also known as the slave and the master tusks. Which one is used more often? Where's that floppy-eared elephant gone? I'm sure I saw one with a very floppy ear. That's another thing that makes an elephant quite easily identifiable. They sometimes break the cartilage or damage the cartilage at the top of their ears. And as a result, they have a permanent floppy ear. I think it's that one, Sens. Mm, maybe not. Where did you go? And a lo another lovely question coming through from Ashes. My goodness, you're on form this morning. You want to know how do elephants sleep? Ashes, the answer is actually very little according to a very conclusive study that was carried out into elephant sleeping patterns. Once an adult elephant has reached sexual maturity, once they're fully mature and they're adults, they will sleep according to their brain waves, a study done on their brain waves and the movement of their trunks, around about actually entering deep sleep only every couple of days. However, when they do sleep or when they do doze, they usually do it standing up but they can lie down as well. So it's a fallacy that an adult elephant can't lie down and then get back up again. That's not true. An adult elephant absolutely can lie down and stand back up again. They just don't lie down for long periods of time. Often they'll find themselves a termite mound or a tree and go and lean up against that and use that basically to support their weight while they doze. Baby elephants, on the other hand, they sleep far more often. So especially the young, young elephants under around about two years old, they will have regular nap times. And that's another one of my favorite things to watch because the whole herd patiently surrounds a sleeping group of youngsters, leaves them to doze, and basically forms a protective circle around them and watches them while they sleep. The other fun thing to see, and it's something that we've seen on our live safaris often, is when it's time for the adults to wake the babies up because the little ones actually have often have tantrums. And the adults will sort of walk up to them and touch them gently with their trunk, and if there's still no response, then they'll actually kick them gently, try and force them to their feet, and the baby elephants don't really appreciate that. Quite entertaining. Just like a toddler being woken, woken from a nap. Buddy. Some ranjit? Sorry, hold on one second. It's Zulu. 
The, they went onto the side of the lugger, this side, but they went flat down in the bushes. I don't know where exactly. <laughs> Senzo? Everybody sees Senzo and thinks he speaks Swahili. And he spends his life going, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I don't understand. It won't take long for us to catch on with the language, but <laughs> it seems to happen to Senzo at least four times a day. <laughs> sorry, Kirsty, what was the question? All right, that was the question we were answering. I got completely distracted. Um, he wanted to know how many hours an elephant will spend eating. Many is the answer. In fact, they eat pretty much constantly throughout a 24-hour period. They might have the odd nap. They might spend slightly less time, or they do spend slightly less time feeding at night, but they still continue to feed throughout the evening. So essentially, you're probably looking at around about at least 20 hours a day that an elephant will spend eating. And they need to do that because their digestive system needs bulk feeding. It's quite, it, it doesn't necessarily break down the nutrients in the same way that ruminants do because they don't have the four stomachs, or at least the four chambered stomach. So as a result, the food passes through them partially undigested. So to support a massive size like the size of an elephant, they need to eat constantly. As a result, of course, it wears down their teeth. You can imagine. Imagine if you had to chew on a tree for 20 hours a day. You wouldn't have any teeth either. And that is why elephants have six sets of teeth throughout their lives. Ah, interesting question from Justin. We were speaking about elephants' sleep cycles. Yes, I do think elephants dream. In fact, I'm certain that elephants dream. Uh, just like your dogs and cats at home, I'm sure you've seen them when they're chasing something in their dreams and their paws are twitching and their tails twitching. And sometimes you might even see their lips sort of curling up in excitement. And we've seen lions dream before. We've seen their feet twitching as though they're chasing something in their sleep. So, and I've seen baby elephants do exactly the same thing. Little legs sometimes running madly in their sleep. So yes, I believe that elephants dream. The adults, I'm not sure. Oh, there's the elephant with the floppy ear, Senzo, to the left. Oh, it just turned. It's the one feeding up on the termite mound. A little bit further to the left. That's the one. It's got a floppy ear. Floppy right ear. What do you think, everyone? Do you think elephants dream? I'm certain that they do. Mareka, you want to know why the elephant tusks are so thin compared to those of the Sabi sand? It's interesting, isn't it? There's quite a few with much longer tusks, but they seem to be thinner. I don't know why that is, except all I can suggest is that it's a, just a result of genetic changes that have happened as elephants have split off into different areas. They're the same species. But it might just be that you get subtle genetic difference, differences, just in the same way that you get people differences in people throughout the world. You might find that if for some reason thinner tusks, thinner, longer tusks have been favoured here, perhaps because they're, I don't know, maybe they spend more time digging, reaching down to the ground, something to do with the quality of the food, less feeding on branches, thick branches, perhaps. There's plenty of grass available, so they probably don't feed as often as the ones in the sands do on trees. So maybe their tusks don't need to be as thick. Maybe it's... it could be anything, really. Maybe it's just that the ancestors that happen to be relatives of these elephants just happen to be ones with longer, thinner tusks. Again, I don't feel like I've been here long enough to put that as an absolute statement of fact. Certainly by my observation, just having been here for a while, it seems that the tusks are on average a little bit longer and a little bit thinner. Of course, there is the, you have to consider the potential of human impact as well. But that's not quite the case here, I don't think. I don't think there's a reason why potential 
poaching issues in the past might have caused a situation with thinner tusks, certainly less tusks. And we know in parts of Africa, not here and not in South Africa, but we know that in parts of Africa, the poaching problem for elephant ivory has essentially artificially created a situation where elephants, more and more elephants are being born without tusks because elephants that are born naturally without tusks are the ones that are surviving and therefore the ones that are reproducing. And as a result, it means that they're f basically favoring the elephants without tusks. But I don't think that's the case here. I don't think that this is the result of human influence. Oh, Jack, we've already spoken about the situations where giraffe might fight. I wouldn't say that bull elephants fight a lot. In fact, to see a proper fight between two bull elephants is actually relatively rare. And it will only happen again where you've got two equally sized males competing for one female. You'll often see elephants sparring. That's a different story. That's not really fighting. That's play fighting. That's practicing their fighting skills with each other. And I, occasionally it gets a little bit over-enthusiastic and an elephant gets hurt and gets a little bit annoyed, but it's not really aggressive fighting. You don't often see clashes between two big bulls. Most of the time, any conflict is resolved by common sense. So if you've got a situation with, one ma with two males and a female, the biggest male will often just be able to sort of reserve his right to mate with her just by sheer size and intimidation factor alone. He won't need to fight unless his opponent is an equal si of an equal size. So I would say that serious fights are quite rare. Would be, it is, not would be, it is something extraordinary to witness and it would be something that I would love to show you on these live safaris. Oh, Senzo back to the termite mound. Oh, floppy ear. Every time I try to show you to the world, you turn your head. Shame. Perhaps he's a little bit shy about his floppy ear. Don't worry. Makes you special. Completely unique. Come on. D, this brings us back to another difference, just in terms of the habitat that these elephants are in. No, I don't think that the elephants do push down trees as often as they do in South Africa. That doesn't mean that they don't do it here, it doesn't mean that they don't push trees over, but for the most part they don't need to as often as our elephants do in South Africa, and especially in the low felt. And that's because the wet season, there's just much more rain here, so the grasses and the different soil types mean that the grasses are of a better quality all year round. So there's far more for an elephant to feed on. Now they don't need to be as preoccupied as ours do during the dry season, or South African ones do during the dry season, with feeding on trees. So I haven't seen it all that often. It does, does happen, but not as often. Perhaps things change when the wildebeest get here and the elephants move further up into the mountainous areas. Perhaps they spend more time feeding on the trees there. Come on, mister. Otherwise, I think we're going to have to reposition. Uh, while we've been sitting here focusing on the elephants, our buffalo have caught up with us as well. They've come streaming across. Getting closer and closer towards those lions, I have to say. Nobody seems to have found them, though. They disappeared after we last saw them. They've disappeared into the long grass. But they're not far from here. They're definitely